Uh, yeah, I was just trying to understand the, the moon phases. Um, oh, the lunar phases? Just, just how, yeah, just how the Earth rotates around the sun and the, the moon rotates uh, with the Earth. Um, I don't get it at this moment. Okay, let, let so me show, let me pull up something here quickly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, can you see this, uh, my screen? With the moon and... You, uh, astronomy education at the University of Nebraska. Can you see that? Um, no. Probably no. Just, uh, okay. Well, okay. I think I have to open the entire. Okay, just a second. Stop sharing. Share desktop. Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So here is the sun. Got that? Yeah. Right here is the sun. And Earth is right here. And we are looking at Earth from north, from the north celestial pole, if you will. So right in the center of Earth is North Pole. So technically, if we all were circles which is not but if it were circles um, this line here the circumference would be the equator and if earth had no tilt earth axis of rotation had no tilt then um, the circumference would be the equator and this point right here north pole and this guy over here would be sitting on equator okay so here's the sun, the sun is there. And then you can kind of uh, think about time of the day for this little person here. So what the time of the day you think is for this person right here? Um, so the sun is right here. Noon. Noon. And, and you, you can see this in, in this box down here, the right lower side. So you have the little person there, and the sun is high up in the sky right here. You see that? Yeah. But see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this guy and allow Earth to spin for six hours. So see what happened with the sun in the lower right-hand box. See that? So the sun set. And this person is down here. The time of the day now is what? 6 p.m. or so, right? About 6 p.m. And then I will keep going. I'm going to go another six hours. Earth rotates to midnight. See that? And now another six hours and that person will see the sun rising right there. See that? And then, and then Earth rotates, and then you have days and night, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So that's how it goes. Now, this is one of the independent motions. Earth rotating around its axis of rotation. And as a result of this motion, we experience days and night. You got that one? Yeah. Okay. So now let's, let's incorporate the moon into this dance. So the moon is right here. You know? So when the moon lies between sun and earth, we call this phase new moon. And by the way, let me show tick marks. So then you have noon, sunset, midnight, and sunrise. Okay. So when the moon lies between earth and the sun, we call new moon and we don't see any of the moon because the hemisphere that happened to be turned towards Earth is not lit. 
See that? Yeah. So the lead hemisphere faces sun, does not face us. So even if you could kind of see where the moon was, with the sun right in the way, you couldn't see it. The sun is the brightest thing in the sky, so we don't see anything else besides the sun. Okay, look, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow the moon to orbit Earth. And from the perspective of somebody standing north, the moon goes counterclockwise around Earth. So I'm bringing, and as I do that, I'm not rotating Earth. I should, but I'm not. Okay. So now I'm placing, yes? Is the Earth usually rotating? Should be oh yeah, 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 yeah. So let me show the animation as it should be. So the moon goes around Earth, you know, and takes twenty-seven point three days, the so-called sidereal month, to complete one entire turn, and meanwhile Earth keeps rotating. See that? So as the moon orbits Earth, at any given time, half of the moon is entirely lit by the sun. All is half. And I'll stop right here. Now, we call full moon, full moon, when the lit hemisphere happens to be entirely facing Earth, like, like now. And we call it new moon when the entire lit hemisphere does not face moon. It's facing the other way. It's facing where the sun is. And, and we don't see it. So if you observe this animation, you can, you can kind of see and understand the origins of moon phase. If you observe the upper right-hand box, when the phases are displayed, in the waxing phase, in the waxing phase, uh, the uh, right-hand side of the moon is entirely lit, as you as you see in the sky. And a few days later, when the moon passes its full phase, it's almost there. Right now, now what you observe is the right-hand side of the moon is going to be on the dark, as we observe it. See that? Mm -hmm. Now the moon is waning. And the left-hand side of the moon, as we see in the northern hemisphere, is the one that has a sharp edge and all bright. And the moon okay. wanes. It's waning. This is I, I didn't Uh, I think you, uh, uh, the communication got kind of a scramble. Can you repeat what you said? Yeah, this this is a lot clearer. I didn't use this picture. Of this clear. So it's better. So it, it, it's it's somewhat clear now. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Let me get a. Let me get some some something here. Just a second. Well, not a tablet in case I need to write um, anything. Um, yeah. So, for instance, let's let's uh, stop this animation for now. Uh, what is it right here? Can I have a question right here, Professor? Hey, Min Hyun. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, since we're talking about the moon phases, uh, I got a question. So yes. When the when the moon is closer to the sun than the Earth, so what phases uh, should we see? Okay, so look at this. In this phase, the moon is closer to the sun than Earth is. So yes. the phases are crescent. Yeah, crescent. crescent yeah. or new moon. So the moon uh, is closest to the sun in the new phase. It's right here. And it's further out. In the we, we don't, say it again? Even though we don't see the, the new moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Up here. Yeah. But um, the closest phase, I mean, the moon approaches the sun in the waning crescent phases and then gets closest in the new phase and it start to depart and go away from the sun in the waxing crescent phase. Now, Earth becomes closer to the sun in the gibbous, waxing gibbous phase, and, and the moon gets further from the sun in the, in the full phase, and then it starts approaching again as it goes through the waning gibbous phase. Now, if I bring the Starry Night software like this, uh, this is January 7th. Oh, this is for today, 2016, um, 6.45 a.m. Um, there is a nice viewing. We have the moon in the eastern sky, Saturn. like a probe that would be a nice view let me approach this see what it is oops that's too much so here's the moon in which phase this is if you look at the moon like that which phase this is how can you tell which phase it is? Just if you bump into the moon in the sky, how can you tell? Away. What? It's just too far. I cannot see. Just I just see two bright. Oh, oh, you don't see the moon right here? Oh, right there. Oh, I see now. Yes. Okay. See that? <laughs> that would be. Yeah, that would be waxing crescent. Okay, so you know it's a crescent phase, right? Because you have a tiny yeah. bright edge of it appearing to you now in the northern yes. hemisphere how do you decide if it's if it's waning or waxing so here's the trick uh, so okay. which hand would you use to grab this crescent phase you see would you use your right hand yeah, or left hand i would use the left hand okay so if you use the left hand um you are making a um, uh, I have to write down so let me go back to the chat room just quickly um, you you stop seeing my my window now for a second but I will go back to that just yeah. a second uh, whiteboard there you go so you you are we are seeing this type of moon right there, right? Okay. So, the letter you write is the letter A for after after uh, full moon. So, this phase See the letter A like this, kind of, after full moon. So after full moon, the phases are waning. So that phase is a waning crescent phase. So let me, let me go back to another, another one, uh, two, sharing. Go back 
there. Now I'm going to advance the time. 21. So now it's 21 January. And you're in the PM hours. In fact, I need probably a There you go. So which phase is this? So when you look at the moon as being somebody in the northern hemisphere, can you see my, my, my window? Yes, I do. Yeah. So yes. the part of the moon that is sharp lit is the right-hand side. So if you were to grab that moon, you would grab with your right hand, correct? Yes. Okay. So now let's go back to the chat room. So now we have a moon that is more or less like that. Okay. So we are writing the letter B. Okay. B4. B4. Before who moon. So it should be waxing. So this is a waxing phase. So if you can if you look at the moon, you have to be in the northern hemisphere. If you go to the southern hemisphere, Australia, Brazil, Uruguay, all of this is reversed. But if you are in the northern hemisphere, you see the moon in the sky, if you grab the bright lit part with your left hand, that moon is a waning moon. If you hold with the right hand, that moon is a waxing moon. And then you have to decide and see if it's crescent or gibbous, depending on if more than 50% of the lead hemisphere is filled or not. If, if it is, it's a gibbous. If it's less than 50% lead, we call crescent. If it's a half, we call quarter. Does that make sense? Yeah, that would cover all the phases. How do we know? What? Yes, that's how do we know we are from North Hemisphere or South Hemisphere. Uh, that's why we are in San Jose, right? And if you are in San Jose, it's Northern Hemisphere. It's above Equator. Um, and any, any city you go or any country you are that is above the Equator, um, it's Northern Hemisphere. And then this rule apply to that. But if you go to the Southern Hemisphere, and if you want to see the moon in general, we have to face north. And when you face the north to see the moon's face, uh, they appear to be reversed from what we see in the northern hemisphere. Let me go back to here. So can I back to uh, my question once again? Yeah. That the, the, when the moon is closer to the sun than the earth, so what would we see? We will see western, western, western. You don't see anything. Western, western. Oh, really? Well, because if when the, 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 when the moon is closest, is when the moon is new. In the new phase, you don't see anything, right? Oh. The new phase is the only phase that you really don't see anything. Right. I I still because uh, I still think if we when I mean if uh, when the moon is closer to the sun, then we would see something, right? No. Let me go to no? today seven. Let me see here. seven seven seven. Let me go to the starry night ah. and seven January seven. 
And let's look east. Uh, AM. January 7. So the sun is rising. Okay. And, and let me get rid of daylight. So I don't have daylight, and, oh, wait a second. Okay, where is the moon? Remember those two dots? One was Saturn, and the other was yes. something else. So they are here. They are right there. And the moon, let me see where the moon, I lost the moon. The moon is right here. Look at that. Yes, I, I see, see the moon it. there okay but uh -huh. i'm gonna bring it again daylight how can we see the moon cannot so and this phase is not new this phase is a waning crescent phase so let me go another day eight where is the moon now? Uh, let me get rid of. In fact, let me put a find. Find the moon. Oops. Should be somewhere here. See, I, I can't even see. It is all lost. Uh, it's in the center? It's very much close to the sun. If I, um, yes. if I hide daylight, okay. it's right there. Here's the moon. And then I'm gonna go another day, nine. See the moon right there? Yes. So this is, uh, let me see, see if I can take the phase of it. The moon, uh, 29.5 days. So in a few hours, the moon is going to be technically new, right? Technically yeah. new. So which means if, if we give uh, and allow the time to, to flow, as it's happening now, it's called day or diurnal motion. Remember yesterday? Yes. Yeah. So if I stop now and check it again, 29.4 days old. So when it's 29.5 days, the moon is technically new. The disk illumination should be 0%. Keep looking at this number here as the moon goes. 14%. Point thirteen percent. So eventually it's going to be 0.0%. And I wonder if we can see the other day. I said 0.16%, 7 Now it's growing. So it's not ever exactly 0% because of uh, the inclination of Earth and uh, Moon's orbit with respect to Earth. So 0.13% is is technically the new phase. So that's when the moon is uh, the further or the closest to, to the sun, and we don't see it. First of all, the disk illuminated that faces Earth is almost nothing, first of all. And second, even if you could see it, the sun would be in the way, like that. And then we wouldn't see it at all. So when the moon is closest to the sun, we do not see it, period. We do not see anything. We do it. not see anything, even if you were a clairvoyant. Oh. Oh. Okay. Does that make sense now? Yes, because one of the, yes, because one of the questions from extra credit uh, yeah, so that's why I did not get the correct. So that's why I'm saying, wait, wait a minute, because when we see the the moon closer closer to the sun than the earth, we should see something, but it's not. Uh -huh. 
You know, we don't. We don't. The sun is in the sky. It never looks straight to the sun. So the sun is in the sky, and 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 the moon lit hemisphere is completely turned away from us. So we don't see it. There's no way. Okay, thank you. All right. Juan, it's clear now? Yes. It's a little bit better now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. Yes. I have a question for Taha. Um, Friday, Bob will be going to review some of these things. On Friday? Yeah, at that six. Oh, and six is gonna be more general. Um, there, it's more like a public talk. Um, and I will talk on some of these issues, but not so technical because it's for public. So you guys okay. just sit down and relax and have a good time. And what do we need to do on that day? I I forgot uh, from the syllabus. We well, have to attend. Yeah, you have to attend. The talk start at six o'clock. Hopefully, we are we are using a different place, and I hope everything goes fine. I don't think we'll be able to go to the observatory because um, tomorrow is is overcast. I think it's gonna be all cloudy, uh, which means I I might have to cancel the visit to the observatory. But but uh, the talk will happen. And uh, so what you do, you you go with a little book notes and and take few notes, and then you can upload a couple of paragraphs of information um, describing what what you learn or or and, and follow the guidelines that I put in a in, in Moodle. So let me show you. So it's right here. Oops, no. Oh, that's for is the place still in BPA auditorium. Uh, uh, there we go. Talk. There we go. Talk. Our fantastic moon. Submit a brief report highlighting the main topics of the stock. And you have up to January 11 to submit that, which is Monday. Okay. Um, so you ask a question. What did you ask? I asked. I, I just asked. Uh, the play still happen in VPA auditorium? Yes, the the talk is in the VPA auditorium. Uh, what you do, you you go to your student parking lot, and as you enter um, the campus, you have to go to uh, the entrance that is um, the the one. Uh, in in Yerba Buena, uh, the last entrance on the left hand side in Yerba Buena, and then once you enter, you turn left instead of a turn right, and then you try to find a parking space in there. Oh, wait a second! You you don't have a you don't have a. Um, uh, um, you don't have a staff permit. No, you turn right and then you park the car and then you 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 walk uh, towards the VPA Visual Performing Arts Building, and and there will be signs that posted in there. Okay. All right. Yes. And but so can I ask about the exam? The first exam will be on January eleventh. That's Monday, uh, correct? Will, yes, we will have the exam based on four chapters that we have learned, right? Yeah, the exam you have one hour to complete. Oh, just at one time only? Yeah, one time only. I will, I mean, on t one time only on Monday. I will reopen the exam on Wednesday again. You might not see the same questions, but you have a second shot, and I will pick up the highest score of both both uh, shots. Yeah. When do you when do you plan to open the exam Monday, or can you open earlier, like Sunday? I will open Sunday midnight, and I will close 
close on Monday midnight. So you have 24 hours to, to select one hour to complete your exam. Mm -hmm. Because I, I work on Monday and I um, come home really late. So that's why I just uh, want to do a half like on the weekend. But since you open only things uh, start at 12 at midnight, Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, either you can you can you can do early on Monday before you go work. Uh, oh, really? Because I still yeah, it's okay. I will find time. Yeah, I yeah. will follow the rules and I will find time. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, can I uh, because I come uh, for some extra credit? Can you explain how you, do you create a bundle? So I. And allow only do only one point. Uh, the I extra think, credits you can the all the extra credits you can do as many times as you want. But oh, uh, the grade. Right answer, uh, no, you you do as many times as you want, but the grade of your extra credit will be the grade of your last attempt. It's not gonna be the highest score. Of your attempt, like in homework, homework you can do as many times as you want, and the software will pick up the highest score of your attempts. Um, yeah. But in extra credit, is not like that. Um, you, you, you. It's gonna be the last attempt um, will give you your uh, extra credit grade. Um, I don't think the extra credit will tell you if you got it correct or not. I think it's just going to be mute once you submit. You don't know if you got it right or not. Because that's oh, the really? whole point. Of, yeah, that's the whole point of getting the, the, uh, the less attempt. Because uh, since the extra credit, there are only two or three questions. Uh, yes. Students who want to just get an extra credit and they are not interested in learning, what they would do is to submit as many times as, as they can to get it right, right? Okay. So the point is you have to read it and try to get it right. Because, you know, if, if you could check my work, um, I did some of them. Well, uh, that's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal with extra credits. So you submit if you think is you did it right. So you don't need to to uh, look for help. But let's say some of the questions are not clear. So what do you do? You mail me and you ask for help and say, hey, you know, the question is based on that. My answer was this because I think that blah, blah, blah. And then I will reply to you and say, hey, you know, but have you considered this, this, and that? And then you're going to take that into account and then, and then either, you know, keep your answer or make changes and then communicate with me. The main point is to use extra credit to learn more the subject and interact with me yeah, in the process. That's the whole thing. Okay, thank you. I got that. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Tom. See you mañana. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.